Well, good morning, everybody. Greetings to you on this wonderful day. Uh, good to be with you on a Monday. Uh, and this is the final Monday of the month of March. This is the final week of March. Uh, and we're jumping into April there. Uh, and they say, what do they say? April showers bring May flowers. Uh, and not the ones that the pilgrims came on. We're talking actual flowers. So there you go. But uh, we're finishing up March uh, this week. And uh, trust that uh, uh, our Power Up does find you well this morning uh, on this first day of the week. I'm going to ask if you would, if you're just now jumping on here, uh, I'm going to ask if you would hit that share button so that others can jump on live here this morning as well. And look forward to reading through the Word of God with you. Uh, today we had a great day yesterday in church. It was good to be, uh, good to be in the house of the Lord, and good to fellowship, and uh, uh, good to worship the Lord. And so, uh, thank you so much for those of you who were able to be here, uh, wherever you're watching our power up from. Hope that you were able to be in church, uh, wherever it is that you're watching from. But we had a great time in church yesterday. Uh, now, uh, once again, those of you just getting on, hit that share button. Uh, so that others can, some of your friends and followers will be able to jump on as well. We're going to be in Job chapter number 39 today. Uh, so let's look there, Job chapter number 39. The Bible says, uh, as we get into this, Job 39, uh, God is speaking here, speaking to Job. Uh, and he uses uh, several uh, descriptions of several animals uh, to, to represent and to show forth uh, God's power, God's knowledge, his understanding, and so on. And so we're going to look at, at that today. I don't know if we'll get through the whole chapter or not, uh, but we will, we will uh, get through probably the first uh, maybe dozen verses or so, eight to, t eight to 12 verses we'll look at uh, here today. And so here we go. Let's look. Job 39 and verse number one. Uh, the Bible says, Knowest thou the time when the wild goat of the goats of the rock bring forth? Or canst thou mark when the hinds do calve? Uh, canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time uh, when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Uh, their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. And uh, so we have uh, uh, the wild goats being mentioned here and just... Uh, kind of their their life cycle a, a little bit here it's mentioned uh and uh and then we're going to look in verse number five where we're introduced to uh, to another animal as well uh so let's look at verse number five it says who hath sent out the wild ass free or who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass uh, whose house i have made the wilderness and barren land his dwellings and so the wild ass they uh, they wander uh, in, the, in the wilderness, it says the barren land, his dwelling. Uh, you look at verse number seven here, further description of this animal. Uh, he scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. And so we see the, uh, the fact that this animal is uh, untamed uh, and uh, kind of uh, uh, does its own thing. Uh, we see here. Verse number eight, the range of the mountains is his pasture. He searcheth every uh, great thing. And this animal just, uh, it eats and eats and eats. It's untamable. Uh, it doesn't want to listen as we, uh, as we, you may have had experiences with yourself or have seen maybe in, uh, uh, on television and movies and, and those types of things. Let's look at verse number nine. Uh, verse number nine, uh, we see, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib. Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Uh, or he, or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Uh, wilt thou trust him because his strength is great? Or wilt thou, thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? Gave us thou, uh, and so uh, before we get into the next one, so uh, we see the unicorn being mentioned here, and uh, there's some debate over what animal this is. Is it the uh, unicorn as we view it, the horse with the single horn on its head, uh, and or is it uh, some other creature? And we would see uh, in in nature, we would see different animals that word unicorn just means that it has one horn on it, and so there's some that think that maybe. 
uh, the rhinoceros is mentioned here or some other, obviously some other animal with a horn on it. We know uh, that in the thousands of years that have passed since the uh, since the, this was uh, penned uh, and given to mankind, that obviously there are animals that have become extinct since then. Uh, we'll look at some other creatures uh, that uh, that are mentioned here uh, in the in this chapter, in the next chapter of Job, uh, where we don't know exactly what they're talking about or what's being mentioned here, uh, because we don't see those uh, those animals today. And so this unicorn that is mentioned. Uh, not exactly sure what it stands for. There are a few indicators, uh, maybe at what it is. Uh, it says that it has great strength. Uh, in verse number number eleven, well, not trusting because his great strength. And we know that uh, we know that both those animals, the the one that would look like the horse of the unicorn that, as depicted, or the rhinoceros, they have incredible strength. Rhinoceroses have incredible strength, very unpredictable. Uh, and so on. And so God's just uh, uh, giving this uh, animal as an example here. We see in verse number 13, it says, Gave us thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich. Uh, and so we note these two, these two birds, the peacock uh, and the ostrich that are mentioned here, very different animals. Uh, and then we see, which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in dust. And uh, we see the placement of the eggs there. Uh, and then we note this, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain uh, without fear because God hath deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted to her uh, understanding. What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorneth the horse, horse uh, and his rider. Hast thou, uh, uh, well, and then we get into the horse a little bit here, but you think about these birds, uh, uh, how that uh, they even trample their own young and, uh, and uh, uh, even the, uh, the eggs as well as they place them under the earth, they're, they're likely to be trampled upon. Uh, we look at verse number 19, it says, Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? Uh, as uh, you, you know, the, the sound that the uh, horse makes. Canst thou uh, make him afraid as a grasshopper? Uh, the glory of his nostril is terrible. Uh, and so we note uh, that uh, horses are, are very skittish animals as well. Uh, you don't want to walk behind them because uh, they, they can't see behind them. and They uh, tend to kick. The glory of his nostrils is terrible when they are, are running and breathing in that. You, you, can, you sense it, you know it, you can hear it. Uh, and uh, that word terrible often meaning with, with power, meaning awesome. Uh, he paweth in the valley and rejoiceth in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear and is not affrighted. Neither turneth uh, he back from the sword. The quiver rattleth against him. The glittering spear and the shield, he swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage. Uh, neither believeth he that it is the sound of the trumpet. He saith among the trumpets, ha, ha, and he smelleth the battle far off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Uh, doth the hawk fly by the wisdom and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up uh, at thy command and make her nest on high? Uh, she dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock and the strong place. From thence she seeketh the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. And so that brings us uh, uh, through chapter number 39. And just kind of a, uh, a reminder for us as we consider these uh, animals that have been mentioned here. Uh, and uh, and what, is, what God is doing here is God is showing uh, his creative power. He is showing his awesomeness. He's showing his creative design uh, in these different creatures uh, and even how he has uniquely gifted and purposed these, uh, the animals that he has created. Uh, and as we look at the creation, as we look at the creatures uh, uh, that, that are around us, uh, they are to bring us uh, to this realization, bring us to this fact that God uh, is the master designer uh, uh, of all that we see, and it ought to bring us to 
uh, to that personal relationship, desiring that personal relationship with our Creator. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, as we uh, as we live this life and as we hear and interact with individuals, unfortunately, oftentimes the creation is not readily accepted by mankind. And the reason why mankind does not readily accept a creator is because if there is a creator, a creator of these animals uh, that, that we've read about and, uh, and their purpose and their design and their beauty and their power, the reason why mankind does not want to recognize a creator is because then mankind has to recognize that there is a God uh, and that they were created with a purpose and that they will answer to that God someday. Uh, and so it is very convenient uh, to not recognize that there is a God because then you can just live life how you want and do what you want. And don't we see that being played out in our society today uh, where uh, the violence is, uh, is uh, readily accessible to the, to the eye and uh, some experience violence in their own lives. And, uh, and uh, we see the, the gender dysphoria that uh, is, is plaguing our society today. And, uh, and, and the list goes on. Uh, that's that is the result of a godless society when you when there's nobody when you don't have to answer to anybody uh, and God here is, is talking to Job and he's and he's uh, uh, showing Job his power his design and uh, in, in in the entirety of his uh, creation uh, and uh, and what it what it ought to do is is uh, drive Job to fall more in love with the Lord uh, and it, it ought to inspire Job to seek God, to seek his wisdom, to trust God uh, because his creation cries out, hey, I, there is a creator uh, and uh, crying out, hey, worship me. Uh, and then God says, think about this now. We've read about these, these the weather patterns in the last chapter or two. We've read about these animals and uh, these creatures here. Uh, and what um, you think about it, and what is God's view of man? God uh, created man in his own image. We would look at creation and think, man, look at that. That's incredible. But God created man in his own image. God desires and prefers man above all else. And, God, and mankind uh, is, uh, is to whom God sent his only begotten son. Uh, to to die for so that uh, our the, our relationship him with him might be right uh, and there was an avenue of salvation provided for mankind so that we could spend an eternity with him we matter to God God loves us God desires us uh, and so let's trust him yes for salvation but let's trust what he's doing in our life each and every day okay we're going to end on that note uh, and uh, we finished up chapter number 39 we'll jump into chapter number 40 uh, tomorrow and I know we're going a, a little quicker through these final chapters uh, as we see these uh, uh, just these examples given by the Lord and so they're kind of a, a different uh, in, in the way that they are, are designed and so uh, we're able to move through them a little bit quicker there okay so hopefully it was a blessing to you today thank you once again so much for being on if you have not shared our power up be sure and do so uh, i'd like to also take a moment and greet those who are watching live today or those that have commented and if you have not commented please comment love to read those uh, uh, during our power up live and then also throughout the day as they come in uh, let's see who, who we got here ingrid good morning to you uh, uh, thank you for watching love you have a great day uh, who else uh, my comments are moving up and down here uh, brian and cindy good morning to you have an awesome day as well uh, gene good morning thank you for being on i hope uh, hope you're doing well uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. Have a wonderful day. Uh, Paula, good morning to you uh, as well. Trust that you have a great day today. Uh, and uh, I echo the latter part of your comment there, Paula. It was an awesome day in church. Just uh, nothing uh, fills my heart more than being able to worship the Lord, be challenged with the Word, and then to just be encouraged by a church body and a church family to see people that love the Lord, that just keep on keeping on. They're such a blessing and encouragement. Uh, and so I would uh, like to encourage you to remain faithful and to keep, keep on keeping on. All right, Lord bless you all. Have a great day, everybody. We'll touch base once again tomorrow. 
Uh, don't forget uh, some of the events of this week. want to encourage you. Uh, we've got our midweek service. There's no rock this Wednesday, uh, so please keep that in mind. Uh, and then also uh, there's a baby shower on Friday here at the church, so please keep that in mind uh, as well. And then we have Championship Sunday uh, this coming Sunday as we close up our March Madness uh, contest uh, with uh, with Championship Sunday. And so thank you so much for uh, your faithfulness watching our Power Up. We'll uh, touch base and reconnect tomorrow. Have a great day, uh, everybody.